and welcome to our new podcast. Yes, this is another podcast. In a world of already saturated podcast market, we yeah. thought, me and Adam thought the great idea of starting up another podcast, because that's what we need. But no, on a serious note, welcome. This is our new podcast. We've been planning it for a while. Um, I believe it was meant to be launched in January, but <laughs> things yeah. have been getting delayed and yeah. Adam has been on my back more than anyone else about it. But yes, this is yeah. the Lost Records Journal podcast. So I am your host, Adnan. And also my other host here is Adam. That's my that's my name. It's Adam. You are and you, Adam. And you uh, don't have uh, silence on your phone. I know. Look at that. It's turned off. So that's turned off. My cat's about to walk in. So he's going to start meowing in a second. It's a great that... way to start the podcast, isn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the Lost Records Journal. This is our podcast, which will be focusing on the Lost Records universe um, based on the upcoming game from Don't Not Entertainment, Lost Records, Bloom and Rage. You might be here for, here for the first time. I always forget about that. There might also be people coming from Strangecast, most of our listeners, I imagine. So we host a Life is Strange podcast called Strangecast, which is available on all RSS feeds and also available on YouTube. Um, but we decided that we wanted to have a, a Lost Records centric podcast. So this podcast is going to be much smaller for now. It's going to be like more of a main topic segments that we have that we're going to talk about Lost Records. Um, once a month, I think at the moment, me and Adam have planned. And then I think more towards the release, probably like twice a week, I think it'll go into bi-weekly. But for mm. now, it's just, you know, that. Um, this does mean that Lost Records will still be covered on the other podcast. It'll be mainly the new segments that we've covered. So you can come here for your like main topic conversation discussions about different things we have leading up to the release when we find out about that um so yeah if you are new here on the youtube channel because this will be uploaded to youtube uh please do consider dropping subscribe on the a channel like the video share with your friends help support the channel helps keep up to date with all the lost records content we'll be doing among many other things um and also we've just crossed 1100 subscribers so thank you very much for that really appreciate it and hopefully hopefully this podcast is on rss feeds because i'm still working on that we haven't done anything yeah. yet we need to get the logo commissioned etc we got it's a been... theme song going and uh, we have I think the theme song's great it's, yeah we uh, it must be a handsome guy who did that one it was it was me that did it by the way hey, just now. wondering <laughs> <laughs> my musical talents have pulled that music out <laughs> well no it, the beautiful music you've heard at the beginning is from adam um he's not getting paid for that he did that nope. out of his own work um <laughs> a little bit late <laughs> no but we appreciate it though nonetheless because he has done the strange cast theme and he has also done this theme as well um and among many other things if you're wondering as well i once said to adam i was like he was having one of those moments where he was like oh my music's not good and etc i was like like you do realize that the podcast strange cast has like over six thousand odd plays on rss mm. feeds and it has like well over hundreds of views on youtube and it's like do you doesn't know, like, mean it's most good people... it just means they're, they're trapped in my music it's like well, yeah well, the thing is, though, the average watch time of the videos are like over eight, nine, ten minutes on the YouTube videos. So it's like, you know, if they didn't like the theme song, they'd be slicing off very quickly. That's so, true. They're, they're just like, well, I'm here for the theme music, but then the rest of this is just vegetables. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, we, we're going to start this podcast off. We'll, it'll take more shape going forward as future episodes go, but we just wanted to start off as an introductory video so you can kind of come here and then you know it exists and you can keep up to date with things. So... We've kind of talked, covered this topic a little bit on Strangecast, but it's also a bit of a recent news piece. So it's the only thing that we're going to talk about, and it's a topic around there. So this was published on Games Radar. It's from Catherine Lewis on the 4th of March. So the story said, Upcoming narrative adventure from Life is Strange Dev only features one playable character, despite its ensemble cast. So uh, they wrote, uh, Lost Records Bloom Rage is shaping up to be an intriguing narrative adventure for fans of the original Life is Strange games. But despite having four main characters at the forefront of the story, it turns out that we'll only be able to play as one of them. The upcoming story-driven game stars four girls, Nora, Autumn, Kat, and Swan, former friends who reunite 27 years after vowing to speak, never speak to each other again due to a mysterious incident sitting at the heart of the narrative. Well, you might have expected that this would lead to the game switching between the four characters to tell collective tales, Speaking to Edge in issue 394, producer Luke Bagadus and creative director Michelle Koch confirm that this isn't the case. Koch, who also directed, uh, co-directed, sorry, Life is Strange 1 and 2, explains that although he does personally enjoy switching perspectives in games, the mechanic can lead you feeling disconnected from what's happening on the screen. So he said, and I quote, I play a character in one scene, but then in the next scene, I see this character talking to me and I'm not choosing the words. Hmm. End quote. 
Uh, on the other hand, he hints that uh, Bloom and Rage's conversations may flow a little bit more organically than those that we're used to from Life is Strange. While we expect the game's perspective to shift between the cast, you should feel as if you're part of a group, but without the worry of being the only one driving the conversations forward. Um, Michelle said, and I quote, uh, you want, uh, sorry, you might want to more clearly listen to someone or someone else and try to intervene or interrupt someone while they're talking, end quote. Uh, in addition, we can expect some quote unquote interesting things for interactivity, end quote, when it comes to making an impact and having quote unquote agency, end quote, in the game's narrative. Much of what's much of what's to come in Lost Records Bloom Rage is still a mystery. The game was revealed during the Game Awards in December 2023 and so far has only received one teaser trailer. It's set for release on P PC, PS5, Xbox Series X later this year. So that's our main topic. We've kind of topic talked about, um, the, you know, I think Michelle did another interview where he kind of alluded to the fact that it's only one playable character. Um, mm -hmm. We have this piece. There's no quotes from Luke, which is a bit of a shame. Um, they didn't mention him, but it's like, I'm, I'm surprised they didn't have anything there. But we kind of wanted to focus on that and the kind of idea that we're going to have four, four main characters from what many people believe four girls so far. Um, and we're going to play as one as that. Yes. So, Adam, I think, would we be safe to say that we would both be aligning to which character we think is the main character? Uh, because I did a, a full trailer breakdown, and I kind of like feel like there's one that's probably going to be the main character. I think even just from this artwork on this, this, this article, just mm -hmm. based on the artwork alone, from where she's standing, it's the girl with the red hair and yeah. the striped shirt. Well, semi-striped shirt. But it's definitely her because she's the only one showing some other emotion. It's different. And she's at the forefront. She's at the actual uh, front of the group. So obviously it's going to be... And it's safe to say that her name's Autumn. Did you guess? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember which one I picked was that. Uh... I'm going to say Nora is the blonde one. Um, Kat oh, will I'm be the to... taller, skinnier one. Swan will be the one wearing the void shirt. And Autumn is the red hair girl. I'm going to quickly check this up whilst you continue. I can't remember how I ordered them. Mm -hmm. uh, how did I order the characters? Ah, yeah. there we go. Let me have a quick look. I pulled my own YouTube video up here. Uh... Mm, Swan could... No, I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it. But yeah, I do think it's the girl with red hair we're going to be playing. That is interesting. I can't seem to find it in mm. my video which one, how I've ordered them. Jeez. Um... Um, you continue... Oh, wait. There we go. Oh. I think oh. that's right. Okay. Oh. So my attempt, and apologies for the moment there. So the character on the far left I had is Nora. Far left is Nora. Okay. That's my my last guess that I had. The one next to that character is called Cat, which I assume, okay. again, is my guess. Then Swan. Swan is the, the red haired girl? Yeah. Okay. That was my guess again. And then Autumn is far right. Okay. Um, okay. And I think that was based off, off of educated guesswork with from the actors revealing which characters were they were playing mm -hmm. on the Instagrams before. That was all changed. Apologies again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really mad about that. That was definitely not someone that someone should have picked up on very quickly there, but it happened from that. Um yeah, that's mm -hmm. that was my my guesswork from it. But I think like I'm with you on the sense that it's the it's the red headed character because like even the trailer, they're in there twice, the eye movement, they have like a two shot with the eyes, and it's like I'm like mm. it's it just feels like it's leading towards that it being that character. Um but I think like as well, even though we have like an ensemble cast mm. and you have all like four characters, I, I didn't know if I really felt that they were gonna go with switching between characters anyway. I don't know if I mm. actually said that prior yeah. to like other podcasts and discussions. I felt like it was always gonna be one because like that's that's the MO, isn't it? For the don't know, especially for Michelle as well. I was like, gonna say it's more than two. It's more of a uh, Michelle's mo, definitely. Yeah. Like a lot of ensemble characters, but only one playable character. You know? Yeah. Um, just 
Yeah, because yeah. like one of the things I noticed as well, because this is kind of my own experience, I've really got into the Yakuza series, spoken about it and etc. Yes. and many other things. Like the first like four mainline games that you pl- I played in that, you basically play as one character. It's, it's Kiryu, Kazumi, Kiryu. And like in the fifth game, have I played the fifth game? I don't know if I played the fifth game. No, the fourth, mm. oh, sorry. The first three games, I, I, I Kiryu slash the, the remakes and whatever else they did with it. And then it's Splinters. So like four basically is the first like last game I played before Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, um, and when you're playing with those characters, it's it's really difficult because it's like it's just splintered the entire story because you're so focused on just Kiryu now going through different angles, and you still play as Kiryu at some point, but you basically go through all these other characters. And I had a friend say to me, he's like, when you go to Yakuza Five, it's a bigger like map, it's like more space, and you mm. kind of get more immersed with the characters, but it's a very a very weird feeling especially when you've been so attached to like one character to splinter off into different stories with different people um i think you might have felt that as well because you played gears of war when they changed characters you'd go through different people's like you'd play this character for briefly and you play this character briefly it's like, I'm like i just kind of want to play as marcus it's like marcus is the main focus of the story it's like yeah. i want i want the rest of the story to kind of support him and complement it so it's like with these characters i mm-hmm. like the fact that they're just sticking with one character yes and then you can basically like you know have shared experiences with it because we have that with life is strange one life is strange two you know we, i'm kind of glad that we never took control of daniel for example in life yes. is strange two i like the fact that there's just complete agency on the fact that you are sean you don't have powers you don't have any control you are basically just sean diaz and you have no control of what other characters are doing um and i like that as well because i think when you start doing that and you start dabbling in with other characters it's very hard i think it's very hard to kind of you know like i'm playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the main character is still Cloud Strife, and you can play as other characters. But it does become a very weird experience when you become another character in like another part of the story, and it's like you can't take control of Cloud, and you're like, it's like um, I feel a yeah. little bit disconnected a little bit, and I don't know why I feel disconnected. Hmm. Um, but no, it's interesting. I like I like his his um the the one quote that they, they had in that interview, which was, I play a character in one scene, but in the next scene, I see this character talking to me, and I'm not choosing the words. It's yes. quite an interesting interpretation to have with that. I think that's quite like when you get involved in any franchise, any game, and etc. I've always felt quite like, uh, you know, it's, it's a different experience completely altogether when you basically stand in front of the opposite character. Yes. Um, and, and I've had that quite a few times in games. It's like I've kind of realized why my character is so powerful because when he's like being me down in another game, it's like I get that. Um, but yeah. I think I think the story will be told through this this one character, the 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 redheaded character. I think like you have obviously we we kind of got from the trailer that they have a love interest with the characters on the far right, and it's like I think that's going to be where you know most of the story is going to be told, and then you have like the nice accompanying characters between each other. Yeah, no, I agree. It's just um like like the quote that you just said, it would just it would just be weird that you're not choosing the the character's dialogue and even more so if it kind of switches between the two characters you're kind of controlling the narrative of where things are going uh because one one might have one emotion another have another emotion but mm-hmm. then you're kind of picking and choosing what emotions they have um no i i just think that like what michelle is really good at is focusing on one specific priority and just like nailing that he, yeah. He's very good at, um, he he is very good at his writing in in that way, where it's just like this is the main focus. There are other side, um, stories like let, let's say the first Life is Strange with like Max, and the side story is Kate Marsh, right? Mm-hmm. He's good at that side story, and that's why people got mostly attached because it is a side story. It's optional. You are connected through caring about this one character on your own accord, um. Rather than like the narrative switching to that, like uh, like you are the perspective of Kate Marsh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I think Michelle is pretty um, wise to say that like, you're only playing as one character in this way. Mm-hmm. No, I, I I completely agree with you. <clears throat> like all the the Don't Not Writing team and like the the developers, and especially with the first Life is Strange and second Life is Strange, it's been like really seamless having experience mm-hmm. with those characters. Like you said, you have that entire like portion of a segment with kate marsh and i could easily see them doing something like that with one of these other characters we have like a really good relationship with them but they're like they're not necessarily like the main part of the story it's just a good kind of like a, a sub part of the story that you have mm-hmm. that adds the overall experience 
Um, and I'm just curious as well, Adam, because this is kind of a conversation to bring in because you kind of got me onto this as well. Oxenfree, obviously, yes. um, was like heavily inspired by like, you know, the, the Telltale, the Telltale developers who were behind that, the ones who were from Telltale. Yeah, and they're incredible. Telltale, yeah. Yeah, we're incredible at writing with that. And and obviously I got my play through from that was from your recommendation, a very great recommendation as well. And if you haven't played Oxenfree, definitely will play Oxenfree. The one thing I loved about Oxenfree was obviously the writing. And it's all the characters, they're mixing around and stuff. I wonder how much that's gonna impact this development of this game because mm. like they they are fans of Oxenfree, because obviously there's an Oxenfree Easter egg in Life is Strange 2, Michelle yes. and Luke and the Don't Know team put in. And they played Oxenfree. I wonder how much their storytelling and like creative like Mm. narrative and and narrative writing changes with this kind of game for example um because it's like i imagine that they must take some note from that because like, as i said oxenfree is so great you just like the story and the dialogue is just well <sighs> i was gonna say as i interrupt you mm, right <laughs> i wanna i want to do this one quote you might want to clearly listen to someone or someone else and try to intervene or interrupt somebody while they're talking. You can do that in Oxenfree. Yeah. You can. Because there's a lot of times where, like, somebody's talking and then you can immediately press, press the dialogue button and just, like, interrupt. <laughs> uh, it's not necessarily, like, used as interrupting in Oxenfree, but you can just, like, uh, talk over somebody in mm. Oxenfree. Uh, you can also not talk in Oxenfree, which is the funniest playthrough you'll ever do in Oxenfree. Yeah, it's just, so good. Yeah, don't do not do any talking. Just press the A or the X button if you're on PlayStation. <laughs> like, that's it. And it's just like, okay, Earth to, Earth to Alex. And then it's just it's funny. But yeah, you can interrupt people in Oxenfree. So it's, it's funny that, um, is it Michelle? Yeah, Michelle says this. Uh, saying that you can additionally, uh, oh, in addition, we can expect to see some like, interesting things from interactivity when it comes to making impact. But yeah, he says you can interrupt somebody mm -hmm. or intervene. So that's interesting that he's allowing you, which is something, like I said, you can do in Oxenfree. So you might which, take an inspiration. Which is something we haven't seen in the, the first Life is Strange or the second Life is Strange, like a, a no. silence option. I don't think you can have a silence option. I don't think you can really interrupt somebody. I think, uh, I don't know if you can be silent in Life is Strange. I don't know. I, I like, not in a way of like Octafree, where it's like, it, it creates like a different narrative. But that's where the, you get a lot of agency from Oxenfree because you can mm. elect to interrupt, you can elect to not talk, you can elect to just keep talking, you can be mean. There's a lot of different options in Oxenfree in terms of dialogue. I don't think there's a lot yeah. of that in the first or second Life of Strange. There's not a lot of dialogue choices in that way. So it's it seems like Michelle is taking a lot of inspiration from Oxenfree and mm -hmm. uh, going from there. Yeah, because everything you said was, was spot on that. And sorry, I was just like closing my, my door. But it's yeah. like the silence is, is funny in both effects for like oxen free. So it's like, for example, like as you said, you have a really funny playthrough if you go silent during the entire thing. Yeah, like how natural that is. But then also as well, they balance it out because obviously silence is an option and you might use it in in the game at certain mm. points. So they have to kind of like still make it all seamlessly work because I think one of the things that, I, you know, I've been learning about counseling and stuff, it's like, silence is such a hard thing to use sometimes because the natural mm -hmm. response is uh, you know i've done it to you as well it's like you know immediately to jump into a conversation i'm like i just trampled over everything he said and it's like i'm like i'm already like you know i'm like oh my god i'm like i can't believe you're just sitting yeah. there whilst i was like just trampled everything he said but it's like it's hard to kind of get a natural gauge where the conversation starts and ends i think everyone has that so it's like with this as you said like what, what they're doing i feel like i hope that with lost records we don't know obviously if there's like this seems like there's a spiritual like a supernatural element and i don't know if they'll kind of go to the idea of like this character has powers like max or this character has powers like daniel but i like the fact that you can basically like if they put more focus on the narrative storytelling which is what they're very good at anyway and they're mm -hmm. like the writing the dialogue and stuff it could make for a more interesting experience overall of, of kind of building relationships because i think like this game all we've seen so far is four characters and it's like, mm. it seems like that's the fabric that holds it together. It's these relationships. And it's like, I want that to really, really be the foundation of this game where it's like, I'm spending immersive time with each of these characters, learning about them, and then kind of like, you know, exploring the story from that. And it, it shapes the story in its own way. 
Um, and, I, and I'm happy that we just stay with the one character. I think it's just smarter because it's just like, imagine just jumping from like, you know, uh, from Nora to Autumn to Cat, Swan, and you're thinking like, you know, I'm not having enough time with one character. And I think that's one of the things that gets lost. Unless this game's like a a, a, a 90 hour experience where you can basically split the story across like, you know, 20, 30 hours each character, then maybe it's great. But it's like, you really want to kind of just spend time with one character. I think that's one of the, the big criticisms that can happen in almost any film, TV show, something where people are like, you know, maybe we should have a bit more time with that character. And you're thinking, yeah, maybe I should have done. Um, yes. But yeah, nonetheless, I'm very excited for that. Um, and, and just to quickly throw this out to you as well, here's, here's a wild one as well. Do you think by the end of the game, and this is a very early prediction, that all four characters will be alive? There might be an option to keep them alive. A lot like mm. um, Until Dawn, trying to keep them alive. Indeed. Or even like, First Life is Strange ending. I was going to say, like, it, <laughs> it, it, in the First Life is Strange, you can keep Kate uh, alive or she dies, you know? Uh, so, yeah, there could be an option of, just, like, do they live or die? There's a lot. Again, it sounds like he wants a lot of options and agency for the player. <laughs> um. I think narratively he might go into separate directions. Like he's ha he, Michelle has enough experience in the games industry now that he can create the game that he wants now. Mm -hmm. So he, I don't know. I guess maybe may, that. I think the real question is: Will the game have options for you to keep them alive, or will they just all have a narrative that naturally goes if they live or die? Yeah, because yeah. like. Because we 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 cover this on Strange Cast, like all the different elements that you're like Jean Luc on the writing team with with Michel. They've hired like American based um, or American born writers to kind of help support of it. We spoke about like, Nina and Desiree. Um, I think like that's all going to come into play because like just think about that teaser trailer as well. We see certain characters, and then it's the character on the far right who I think is Autumn is the only adult character we see. And it's like, for example, they're the love interest yes. of what who we believe is the main character. It's like, why are we not seeing the main character then instead? It's like, has something happened to them? It's like, why, what, who, who, who are they speaking to? Are all four people in the room. We've all, already said that there's always like big it part two vibes of this game. Um, so like the kind of like their relationships will change. Um, but yeah, I think um, we, we're coming. We'll come towards the end of this this podcast anyway like just for context these are going to be shorter podcasts we want it to be mm -hmm. a smaller one compared to a strange cast because strange cast can turn into an, an animal sometimes I'm like i'm like adam adam's like we should try and keep it in this like you know frame of like conversation i'm like yeah don't worry it'll be like an hour and it's like two hours later yeah. i'm like i'm like i didn't realize the topic was that big <laughs> it yeah. doesn't seem to that big um but before we close out as well because adam i had that big theory which is like i think that they're not all girls these characters i think that potentially they all start off as girls um, right. But I think like that one of them will transition. My my belief is that that don't nod will be the kind of the architect of the first non-binary mm. like supporting character. I can't. I think there was another one that we had a conversation gotcha. about. Someone mentioned I, it. I thought you meant one of them is going to turn into an alligator. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it'll maybe, be Swan. Hey. Though the one you least suspect will turn into an alligator. Falls into the hole and turns into an alligator. Mm. And the game's set in Florida then, and not Philadelphia. Mm. No, dang it. It will be set in Philly. <laughs> At least Philly adjacent. It will be set in the Poconos. Not, that's not adjacent, but like a lot of Philly people go to the Poconos. <laughs> you know my point. Philly, I think go. If you get that location, and it's actually in that, that's just the wildest like, guess to even like hit on. Because like, that Strange Cast Fury episode has like, aged pretty well. Like, we got like a lot of good guesses in that, which is kind of good. Um, yes. But my, my belief is that one of these characters will transition. I think the, the time jumping is relevant, and every article has been like, it's before girls, etc. That's fine, but again, like the the, narr the the wording has been very specific from the developers. It's always been like, oh, uh, she's my favorite, or this is my favorite, and none of them have ever been like, this is all four characters, like all four girls, or all four, like, whatever. It's always been four characters, four high schoolers. It's like, very specific wording. I feel like that. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the actors is, I believe, non-binary as well. I feel like there's just there's just too many dots here. It could be too like you know easy easy for me to disregard. But I, I believe that the character that one of them will be non-binary. I don't think the character you control is non-binary when you get to a later point in the game. Um, but I think one of them will be. I think it will kind of like tell you the 
I think I could just kind of put more of a focus on people who who have like you know identified as non-binary late in their life, and it's kind of like that, a bit more of a different perspective. But yeah, I think that's that's me. Anything else? Uh, I'm looking forward to to alligator person. I'm looking forward to alligator person. I'm also looking forward to more news. We're in March, man. I haven't heard yeah. anything about this game since like game uh, the game awards, and it's like this game is coming in 2024. It's like hopefully yeah. things pick up big time, and I, I think they will as well. I think like the the marketing will be a big push for this. Um, but yeah, we'll call it a wrap here. So I hope you enjoyed our first episode. As I said, it'll take a bit more foundation going forward as we move along with this. Um, and if you are new here as well, um, one more time, you know, please do drop us a subscribe on the YouTube channel, uh, like the video, share with your friends, helps to support the channel, helps you keep up to date with the Lost Records content that we'll be doing, which will be extensive throughout the entire year. Hopefully we have the Lost Records developers on here. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, the invitation is always there for them. Uh, and yeah, and also as well, as a, and if you are new here as well, like, you know, as I said, we have Strange Cast, which is our bi-weekly podcast that we do on Player One versus World. That is where we cover Deck Nine news. Um, don't know news life is strange news me and adam get called out on it <laughs> yeah um, among many things right we, we we cover everything on there so we will continue to cover lost records on there and the main news topics will be covered on there this will just be for discussions and topics etc so you have like two extra bits of content for us and all those podcast enthusiasts you have a lot more time with us if, if you if that's what you enjoy um but yeah this hopefully this podcast is on rss feeds soon and maybe hopefully at launch that'll be a good kind of starting point but yeah let us know what you think. Are you happy with the fact that we're going to have one main character in Lost Records and then we have supporting characters? Uh, let us know which character you think is potentially the main character. Let us know in the comments. We're looking forward to it. But yeah, we'll call it hit day here. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, hopefully going forward, as I said, once a month, these will come out and um, you know you can keep up to date with Lost Records content and enjoy what we talk about. And then maybe down the line, we pick up and go bi-weekly. We'll see what happens. Anyway, take care, guys. See you later. Bye. Peace.